Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at St. Paul's on this beautiful but yet slightly humid Sunday morning. It's good to have you here with us as we once again gather around God's means of grace uh, as we prepare for that day of salvation. So welcome in Jesus' name. Today we focus on how God sends us out. This is kind of a continuation of what we talked about last week, how we talked about Jesus calls us and equips us to be his disciples. And this week we'll talk about how because he has called and equips us, he now sends us out to be his disciples, to be the proclaimers of the gospel that he has called us to be. And he has also called us to show compassion to the lost. After all, that's what the ministry is all about. It's about showing compassion, just as Christ has shown us compassion. And so we'll begin with our opening hymn, hymn 547, We Bid You Welcome in the Name. Please stand. You may be wondering why today the pyramids are red. Well, later this afternoon we are going to have 12 of our 15 confirmands uh, receive the Lord's Supper for the first time. So that's why the change in pyramids today. And today we use a modification of Divine Service 2. It's printed in your worship folder. It's also on the screen. So please follow along whichever way is most comfortable and convenient for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, For the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. 
In his great mercy, God made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. So hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all that they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. And now in the peace of our forgiveness, let us praise the Lord by singing stanzas one and five of, two, of hymn 255, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of all the faithful, you alone make strong, you alone make holy. Show us your mercy and forgive our sins day by day. Guide us through our earthly lives that we do not lose the things you have prepared for us in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In his ministry, God calls, equips, and then he sends out. We see that in our first lesson, where God calls Joshua to be Moses' replacement as the leader of the people of Israel. We see that God calls him, he equips him, and then he sends him out to do God's work. A lesson from Num Numbers chapter 27, verses 15 through 23. Moses spoke to the Lord. May the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the community who will go out before them and come in before them, who will lead them out and bring them in so that the community of the Lord will not be like a sheep without a shepherd. The Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and place your hand on him. Have him stand in front of Eliezer, the priest, and the entire community. You will commission him in their sight. You will give some of your authority to him, so that the entire Israelite community will listen to him. 
He will stand before Eliezer the priest, who will inquire for him before the Lord with the decision of the Urim. He and all the Israelites with him, the entire community, will go out at his command and come in at his command. Moses did just as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and had him stand in front of Eliezer, the priest, and the entire community. He placed his hands on him and commissioned him, just as the Lord spoke through Moses. This is the word of our Lord. Our second lesson comes from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonian Christians. At this point, Paul is urging his fellow Christians to pray that he, as, as well as his fellow co-workers, would go out and carry out the calling that Christ has called them to do. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16, and going through chapter 3, verse 5. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and in his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, Encourage your hearts and establish you in every good work and word. Finally, brothers, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may spread quickly and be glorified just as it was among you. Pray also that we may be rescued from, wick, from evil and wicked people, for not everyone has faith. Still, the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and protect you from the evil one. We also have confidence in the Lord concerning you, that you are doing and will continue to do what we are telling you. May the Lord continue to direct your hearts to God's love and Christ's patient endurance. This is the word of our Lord, and we prepare our hearts for the gospel as we hear our verse of the day. Alleluia. May your priests be clothed with righteousness. May your saints sing for joy. Alleluia. Please stand out of respect for the gospel as we hear the words and works of Jesus. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapters 9 and 10. Glory be to you, O Lord. In our gospel, it's, it's a continuation of of what we heard last week. We, last week we focused on Jesus calling Matthew to be his disciple. And we talked about how Jesus calls and equips his disciples and now we see Jesus sending those disciples out to do ministry work and to show compassion to God's people. This will also serve as the basis for the sermon this morning. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were troubled and downcast, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send out workers into his harvest. Jesus called his twelve disciples to himself and gave them authority to drive out unclean spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Jesus sent these twelve out and commanded them, Do not go among the Gentiles and do not enter any town of the Samaritans. Go instead to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 576, Spread, O Spread, the Mighty Word. We will sing the first four stanzas. Spread the king. 
from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who calls us, equips us, and then sends us out. Amen. The portion of God's Word I want us to look at today is our Gospel from Matthew chapters 9 and 10, where we hear of Jesus sending out his 12 apostles to do ministry work and to show compassion to the lost. Please join me in a short prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Compassion is one of the greatest things that we could show to another individual. It could change a person's entire outlook on life. And maybe that's been the case for you. Think about an instance where you were at an incredibly low point in your life. Think about that for a minute. And then, think about a person, when you were at that low point, think of a person that showed you compassion when you were at that low point. Odds are, you remember not only the person who showed you compassion and understanding, but you also remember how they showed you compassion and understanding. When a, person, when a person shows us compassion, that leaves a mark on us, a good mark. We remember those people and we remember the actions that they did on our behalf because it, it changed everything for us. Showing compassion is something that God wants us to do, very much so. After all, God himself tells us in Ephesians 4, verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another. So if we are to show compassion to other people in our own personal lives, how much more should we show compassion in our ministry? After all, when you really think about it, this is what the ministry is all about. The ministry is all about compassion. Let's jump into our lesson for today. Last week, we heard how Jesus already called uh, a few of his disciples. We, we, we briefly heard uh, Jesus calling uh, uh, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. But more specifically, we talked about how Jesus called Matthew, the tax collector. So we know Jesus had called those five. But now we fast forward just a little bit, and now we hear of the full list of the 12 disciples that Jesus had called. You have Peter, Andrew, James, John. Then you have Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, who we heard about last week, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and then you have Judas Iscariot, who would later betray Jesus. Now we know that throughout Jesus' ministry, he was training these 12 men uh, so that after he would ascend back into heaven, these 12 men would go and share the gospel to people all around the world. But why, but 
what exactly did these disciples do while Jesus was still with them? Were they mere silent observers who just followed Jesus around and, and observed all the things he did like little puppy dogs? Did they just sit at Jesus' feet and ask him questions about his teachings and about his parables? Were they nothing more than silent observers or were they actually active participants in Jesus' ministry? You know, I, I think we tend to view the disciples as nothing more than silent observers, but that's actually not the case. Jesus called the disciples, even while he was still with them, to do ministry work. They were active participants, and this is just one of those instances here today. At the end of our gospel, Jesus sends the disciples out to do some local mission work. Jesus told them, go instead to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Even though these disciples were not fully trained yet, and even though they had yet to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, Jesus still sent them out to do ministry. And as you can see, some of that ministry even included performing miracles. You just heard all the things that Jesus wanted them to do. Those are miracles. Now, why did Jesus do that? Why did Jesus send these disciples out so soon? Well, because he needed the help. Now, I know that might sound strange, thinking of Jesus, the Son of God and God himself, as needing help, but that was the case. Why did Jesus need help? Well, in order for Jesus to be our perfect Savior in this world, he needed to be both true God and true man. And as a true man, he could only be at one place at a time, just like you and me. So Jesus needed some help, and that's why he sent out his 12 disciples. Now, it does need to be stated that by this point, Jesus had already done a lot of things just by himself. He was teaching people about the Word of God all the time. He, had, he healed people who were demon-possessed. He healed people who were paralyzed. He healed people of their leprosy. Uh, he healed people uh, who had fevers. He calmed a storm. He healed a bleeding woman. He raised a young girl from the dead. He made blind people to see. He made mute people able to speak. He did a lot. And because of all the things that he did, he had a huge following of people. He couldn't get rid of them even if he tried. Jesus had done a lot. And Matthew 9, verse 35, pretty much sums it up really well when it says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. Jesus had done a lot by himself. But the thing is, is that there was still a lot more that needed to be done. A lot more. The biggest thing that he needed to have done was to have the gospel be preached to many more people before he would suffer, die, and rise for us. And so that's why he needed the help of his called disciples. What drove Jesus to do all of this? What drove Jesus to, to heal all these people and to teach all these people? And what drove him to send out his disciples to do all these same things? Compassion. Jesus had compassion for these people. Verse 36 says, When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus saw how these people were wandering around aimlessly, spiritually. He saw that they were being harassed not only by the devil, not only by the sinful world, but they were also being harassed by their own spiritual leaders who were teaching them falsely. 
They were completely helpless and hopeless. And, and because of that, Jesus felt so bad about that. His heart went out to them. I mean, after all, these were God's chosen people. These were the Israelites. And Jesus loved them so much, and it broke his heart to see them in this poor spiritual state that they were in. Ultimately, that's why Jesus sent out his called and equipped disciples because he knew that there were going to be more people who needed compassion and love. And as true man, he could only do so much of that. So he, so he sent his disciples to preach the gospel and to show compassion to the lost. Freely you have received, freely give, Jesus told them. And that's what Jesus wants us to do as well. He wants us to show compassion to others, just like the disciples did. If you recall, last week we focused on how Jesus called and equipped his disciples, and this week we focus on how Jesus sends them out. And guess what, guys? Jesus does the same thing with us. Jesus has called us to be his disciples. He has equipped us to be his disciples, and then he goes and he sends us out to be his disciples and to show compassion to the lost. Jesus uses us because he knows that just like back then, there are still today so many people who are wandering around aimlessly like sheep without a shepherd. And so that's why he decides to use us. In his infinite wisdom, he decides to use you and me to show love, to show compassion, and to show the lost a Savior who died for them. But in order for us to show that compassion, you and I must go. We must go to where our Savior has sent us. And where has he sent us? Right here. Jesus sends us to be his disciples right here in East Troy, Wisconsin. This is where our Savior wants us to show compassion and love to other people. Jesus wants us to show Christ-like compassion and love to the people in the village and the surrounding area of East Troy, Wisconsin. But it's not just here either, though. It's, it's actually somewhere else, too. It's, a, it's in our homes with our family and friends, at our schools, at our jobs, in our neighborhoods, wherever it is that Jesus has called you to be his disciple, it is there that he wants you and me to show compassion and love to others. Unfortunately, we often lack compassion. We don't always go to where Jesus sends us, and we often leave souls aching and wandering aimlessly. Now, it's not like we don't have opportunities to show compassion to the lost. God drops opportunities in our laps so often to show love and compassion to the lost. But we don't, because, eh, someone else will do it. And we often like to be those silent observers that we think that the disciples were. Now, that's not how that works. Jesus has called you. Jesus has called me to be his disciples and to show compassion to the lost. That's our job. That's your job. That's my job. That's our job. I mean, think about it. Think back to that low point in your life that I had you think about earlier. How different would things be for you if no one showed you compassion at all? Things would be quite different, wouldn't they? Just imagine if Jesus didn't show compassion to us. Imagine if Jesus didn't go to where he was sent. Imagine if Jesus showed us no compassion at all. Ah, someone else will save them. Imagine if Jesus was a silent observer of this world. Things would be a lot different for us. We'd be lost. But that is why I am so incredibly thankful, and I pray that you are too, that Jesus 
was not a silent observer. I'm so thankful, and I pray that you are too, because Christ did show us compassion, because he saw how you and I also were wandering around aimlessly at one point. He saw how you and I were just like sheep without a shepherd, and his heart went out to us. And so that's why he came down into this world and showed us immense compassion by suffering hell and dying on a cross, a fate that is so terrible, a fate that is so gruesome, and a fate that should have been ours, quite frankly. But he took it all away. He took God's wrath away from us, and as a result of that, he also took away our sin. And so we are completely forgiven by the grace of God. Jesus endured the worst physical and spiritual agony that anyone could ever imagine because he was driven by compassion to do that for you and me. Isn't that amazing? We are so, so blessed to know and believe that. But there are still many who don't know and believe that. There are still so many who are wandering like sheep without a shepherd. And unless they know and believe in Jesus as their Savior, they're going to be sent to eternal punishment. Friends, to know that you and I are going to heaven, and then to know that there are other people who won't, that should fill us with compassion for those who aren't going. And so I pray that you would be filled with that same love and compassion that Jesus has for you and me. I pray that you would go to where Jesus has sent you because he has called you, he has equipped you, and so now he sends you out to show compassion to those who need it. After all, this is what this is all about. This is what this ministry, and this is what our own personal ministry, our own lives, this is what it's all about. It's about having compassion for people and pointing them to the cross of Christ for their salvation. So my brothers and sisters, I encourage you with these words, words of Jesus. Freely you have received compassion. Freely give compassion. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which goes beyond our understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We now confess our one true Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. They're available in your worship folder, and they're also on the screen. We join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Just a reminder that since we are not passing the offering plate at this time, if you have brought a th an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord, you may drop it off in the box in the back on your way out. At this point, we will continue with the prayer of the church. And in our prayers this morning, we want to offer up a prayer for a number of individuals. First, we want to pray for Jim Semrad. Perhaps you remember back in the late fall, Jim Semrad um, uh, suffered uh, from a uh, ruptured bowel and had it fixed. And, and so now he went back down to Florida where he had the procedure done in the first place to get things all fixed up and back to normal. Unfortunately, he is experiencing some complications from that procedure, so we pray that God would heal him. 
We also want to pray for Doug Alexander, who is a friend of Dave and Candace Porter. Uh, Doug had uh, contracted coronavirus and his symptoms are not improving. So we pray for Doug. And we also want to pray for Rebecca Holbeck, who is uh, getting married to Zach Chung very soon here. So we, uh, we join together in prayer. Father, for giving us life, breath, talent, and energy, we thank you for income and nourishment, for honest work and opportunities to be useful. We look gratefully to you as our provider. For safety in our travels, we rejoice in the protection your angels give. For national peace, public prosperity, and moral consciousness in all citizens, we ask that you would hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, through you we have the full rights of children of God. What love the Father has lavished on us through our relationship with you. We praise you for serving us and for giving your life as a ransom for our sin. Holy Spirit, through your word and sacrament, restore us to the joy of your salvation. Cause the good seed of the word to produce sturdy faith and godly attitudes and behavior in each believer. O oh God, you are the great physician of body and soul. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on your servants, Jim Semrad and Doug Alexander, who have their own uh, medical complications. If it is your will, we ask that you would spare their lives and restore their strength. Deal compassionately with your servants and bless the medical means employed on their behalf. Lord God, you created man and woman in your image, and it pleased you to, to unite them as one in holy matrimony. You have greatly honored marriage by making it a symbol of the spiritual union between Christ and his bride, the church. Grant that Zach Chung and Rebecca Hallbeck may reflect this perfect love and commitment in their marriage all the days of their lives. Make their home your temple and make their marriage a testimony to others so that your name is glorified among us. And now hear us, good Lord, as we bring to you both our private petitions and our private praises. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. And now hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. It's so good to see 
people coming back slowly but surely uh, since we resumed in-person worship. So uh, for the sake of those who are back here, uh, I will uh, just briefly explain uh, our communion procedure during this time. Uh, as you see, we have the communion set up in these two tables. Uh, just come forward to the table. Um, uh, both uh, Bob and I will be wearing masks. And uh, uh, we'll place the wafer into your hand, and then you can take the individual cup from the tray. Um, and then we would just ask that uh, you would just, uh, you know, practice good social distancing, you know, uh, you know, give people some space um, before you head up. And uh, when you see the individual or family unit that is ahead of you uh, heading back to their spot, then you may approach the table at that time. Jesus said, come to me, all you who, <clears throat> who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come now and receive that rest, for all things are now ready. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus will now strengthen, preserve, and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Be at peace and be filled with joy, because all of your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand for prayer. 
We give thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your wedding guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now receive with believing and joyful hearts the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our final hymn, hymn 559, Lord of the Living Harvest. Once again, good morning to all of you. A privilege to worship our God together as we, as we rejoice in the fact that our God calls, equips, and sends us out to be his proclaimers of the gospel and to show compassion to the lost. Rejoice in that. It truly is a privilege and a joy. Some announcements. Uh, confirmation, as I mentioned earlier, the first of our two confirmation services is happening uh, this afternoon at noon. Um, the annual congregation meeting is also happening today at 4 p.m. here at St. Paul's. And again, it's later in the day because of confirmation. Uh, things to be decided are uh, the 2020-2021 ministry plan as well as the election of church officers. So we would love to have as many of you there as possible. Uh, Board of Christian Ed meets on July 7th, as does the Board of Elders. Uh, Christian Ed at 6.30, Elders at 7.30, Board of Stewardship on July 9th at 7.30, and then the second of our two confirmation services is July 12th. Worship plans for the summer. Um, I sent out a letter via email. It was also on our Facebook page. I don't know if you had a chance to read that, but basically uh, the, the whole point of the survey that, that many of you guys did, and thank you to all of those, we had a, a, quite a few of responses, so that was fantastic. 
But we wanted to see what you guys were comfortable with. And looking at the results of the survey, it seems that there are still a, a good percentage of people who, who want to keep the soft opening, you know, with the, with the three services on Sunday morning to make sure that everything is spaced out and everything. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to continue with our soft opening schedule. However, we will make one small change. Um, when, back when we, you know, uh, began in-person worship again, you know, if you recall, you, had, you, know, you signed up for your spot in church, right? And that was going to be your service for the entire month. Uh, that is no longer necessary. Um, so, like, if your schedule changes and you're usually coming at Sundays 8 o'clock, but you need to come Sunday at 11, not, that's not a problem at all. So you can float around between different services, although uh, consistency would be appreciated. Just, again, just to make sure that we have safe numbers in the sanctuary and we're not all packing in at, like, the 930 service. We don't want that. Uh, but, so consistency would be appreciated, but it's not going to be required any longer. So, um, and we'll continue to do some of the same practices, like the offering box, the way we do communion. And one of the things that was suggested by a number of people is that uh, those who distribute the Lord's Supper would wear a mask, which is what we began doing today. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, and we'll, you know, every other pew as well. So some pews will, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, the elders will reconvene uh, and discuss this matter in the fall. And if, you know, if this current spike that's going on, if things begin to subside, maybe we can take another step toward more normal worship. But that's kind of how it's going to be for the remainder of the summer. But again, uh, you're not just stuck for one service for the entire service. Uh, but consistency would be appreciated, but not required. Um, would like some help with uh, the slides. Um, I did buy a new clicker. Uh, because, as, as you guys know, sometimes the old clicker was giving me problems, but I bought a new and improved clicker. No problems. So that's fantastic. However, um, it would be much appreciated if we could have someone advancing the slides for me. When we do complete phase two, that's going to have to be the case anyway, so we might as well just kind of get used to doing that. So um, uh, if anyone would be comfortable doing that, uh, they, you know, for now with this temporary setup, they'd just sit in the front view and just hit next, the next button. That's all they'd have to do. So anyway, um, if you're willing and able, if that interests you, let me know. Uh, vacation schedule for me, I talked to, to you about this. We have guest preachers lined up. We have pastoral care lined up for you uh, while I am gone. So don't bother me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but the, the, the phone numbers for Pastor Martin and Pastor Bordelin, if anything were to come up while I'm gone, uh, that is on the announcement sheet that has been emailed to you all. There are also uh, copies on the table in the entryway, so if you want to grab one, so you have, hang on to that for future reference so you know who to contact while I'm gone, that would be good. And just a reminder about the, the, uh, the, the new things that we have out on our social media pages, our... Wednesday Devotion, Wednesday Wisdom from God's Word, as well as the worship previews that we put out every week so that you can prepare for what we're going to talk about in worship. So uh, make use of those uh, uh, resources to uh, have a more edifying worship and to grow in your, your relationship with your Lord. With that being said, those are all the announcements. God's blessings to each and every one of you. I'll greet you in the back however you're comfortable with. Uh, you know, we kind of got away from the elbow bump, so I don't know. So if you want to do the elbow bump, I like the elbow bump. It's fun, but however you're comfortable is fine with me. God's blessings to you all.